This week marks the release of a film quietly dumped onto Labor Day weekend called The Light Between Oceans. I found this to be a well-acted little period piece, with some decent melodrama and genuine emotion. However, from the looks of things, this might become a historical footnote in the history of the Walt Disney Company. It could be the final film released under the Touchstone Pictures label. The Light Between Oceans is the kind of adult drama the division was known for, although it also would have been a fitting title for Miramax about 15 years ago. Why could this be the last Touchstone release? Well, to get us to that point, let's look at its history. Disney was a company that, for the longest time, was known as the studio that only released family films. However, that also limited the kinds of films they could release. Even Walt Disney expressed regret at being pigeonholed as a family film producer. There's a story about how, when he went to see To Kill a Mockingbird, he loved the film, but was also disappointed because it was something he would have wanted to produce. But being a film that tackled themes of racism in an adult manner, he would have been unable to do so because of the world's perception of what a Disney picture ought to do. In the late 70s and early 80s, Disney tried to target a more mature crowd with films like The Devil Max Devlin, Tron, and Watcher in the Woods. However, they either underperformed or outright flopped. So Ron Miller had the idea to create Touchstone Pictures, a label that would allow the studio to make more films for an adult audience that wouldn't be turned off by the Disney name and also keep Disney as a trusted name for family entertainment. That first film, Splash, was a huge hit, and the studio had many successes with Touchstone over the next couple of decades. This was perfect timing on Miller's part, too, since the new regime at Disney came in shortly afterwards, and Frank Wells, Michael Eisner, and Jeffrey Katzberg could still greenlight the sorts of films they would have produced at Warner Brothers and Paramount, and not be forced into just making family films. With the success of Touchstone over the years, what led Disney to make less films for that label? Well, one film that could be to blame is Pirates of the Caribbean. There was a period when even PG films, originally intended to be released under the Disney name, were moved to Touchstone because they were thought to be too scary or violent. This happened with Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Dick Tracy, and even The Nightmare Before Christmas, which has since been rebranded as a Disney film again. Meanwhile, films like The Rocketeer, Disney regretted not releasing as Touchstone because they thought teenagers were turned off by the Disney branding. But with Pirates of the Caribbean, they decided to take a risk and released a PG-13 action-adventure film under the Disney name. And its massive success told executives the Disney name was no longer poisonous to the teenage audience they craved so much. Its four-quadrant success also made Disney hungry for tentpoles. More than any other studio, Disney wanted to put as many potential blockbusters as possible and make the studio a force in that area. This meant they started greenlighting less adult dramas and comedies, and Touchstone was most affected by this. They also began paying less attention to that independent film division Miramax, which led to them selling the company and its back catalog, which is insane to me. Oh, this is just a critically acclaimed Academy Award winning box office hit that changed the independent film scene and turned Quentin Tarantino to a household name. Uh, yeah, let's sell it. Bob Iger has made no secret that he envisions Disney as a studio reliant on temples and franchises. Around this time, Disney bought Marvel and Lucasfilm with box office dollars in their eyes, having purchased both a lot of major superhero properties and Star Wars. In the olden days, the Marvel and Lucasfilms would have probably been released under the Touchstone name. Instead, they get their own branding. Luckily for Touchstone, they entered into a distribution deal with Steven Spielberg's DreamWorks Pictures to distribute its films. However, that deal now ends with The Light Between Oceans, and part of the reason was Spielberg's dissatisfaction with Disney focusing so much on their brands and mostly ignoring Touchstone. Disney also used Touchstone for animated films they found themselves acquiring, but were too embarrassed to release under the Disney name, specifically Nomeo and Juliet and Strange Magic. Plus The Wind Rises, which was an inappropriate fit for Disney branding.
Disney right now is focused on brands or films that fit into a certain box. There's Disney Animation, Pixar, Lucasfilm, Marvel, Disney Nature, inspirational sports films, and films inspired by their back catalog. Occasionally, they'll release something that doesn't fit into these categories. This year, they had The Finest Hours and The BFG. They're currently readying production on adaptations of A Wrinkle in Time and The Nutcracker Prince. But those will be a small percentage compared to the tentpole pictures Disney will focus on. What about the Touchstone back catalog, you ask? Well, unlike Miramax, they probably won't sell those off, thankfully. Although a lot of the Touchstone films have been licensed to Mill Creek Entertainment for their Blu-ray releases, which tells you how much Disney cares about most of those titles. And if Disney does decide to take on a property originally released on the Touchstone, said sequel or remake will probably be a Disney title. Adventures in Babysitting became a Disney Channel original movie, which I assume did not have this famous line of dialogue. Don't fuck with the babysitter! <laughs> Meanwhile, their recently announced remake of Splash with Channing Tatum and Jillian Bell will probably be a Disney title. Maybe there's a possibility we'll see the Touchstone logo again, but a part of me felt sad seeing the logo appear before the light between oceans, because in the back of my mind, I knew it would be the final time. Thank you for the memories, Touchstone Pictures. I'll miss you.